Welcome to the crazy house and welcome back to my kitchen. Today we're going to be starting our what's for dinner. The only thing is I've already cooked several of the meals but today I'm going to be sharing how we do one of the meals and then tomorrow we're going to share how we do that one. So I decided I would wait to do my intro until now. So I'm going to give you the menu plan and then I'm going to show you how that we do our chicken kebabs and corn on the cob and then our baked beans on the grill. Super simple. Everything's going to be cooked outside today and it'll be an easy cleanup too because all the dishes are simple and one of the things doesn't even need dishes. So let me go ahead and grab the menu plan book because I didn't grab that. Okay. So, I did share the menu plan on my meal prep video, which hopefully you watched. It was super long this week, but I don't know how that happened. <laughs> it just did. So, Sunday, we um, were supposed to cook something at home, but then we decided since Jeff and I had went on a date day, we um, were just picked up something at Zaxby's and brought it home. So, then on Monday night, we had meatballs with potatoes, onions, and carrots, all with salt and pepper cooked in the oven. It's just a dish that my mama always cooked, but she didn't put carrots in it. I just added that, but it's just something she always cooked, and it's not like meatballs as in Italian meatballs or homestyle meatballs. It is just ground beef in the ball form, form, and yes, it makes a difference. I have tried it to take shortcuts and not put it in ball form. It didn't taste the same. It was still good, but it did not taste the same. I don't know why. But it didn't. So the next night we had grilled chicken, some chicken broccoli rice, and black eyed peas. Then last night, which was Wednesday, we had beef and shrimp tacos with some Mexican rice and well, I had a taco salad. I think that was all we had with it. Um, then tonight we're having the chicken kebabs, corn on the cob, and baked beans. Then tomorrow night we're having cube steak, but Jeff and Noah are having the deer steak, the venison cube steak. Selena and I are having beef. Mashed potatoes and then some sort of vegetable, probably just green beans or maybe pull out some fresh vegetables that we already cut up that we still have left over. All right, and then on Saturday, which is the last day, chicken strips and fries. I will not be showing you how I cook that because I bought the chicken strips from... Sam's. <laughs> so let me go ahead and grab the camera and put it down here and show you the um, way that I put this meal together. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and show you the clips of the different meals that we had. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is get our baked beans ready. Now, I do sometimes make beans from scratch, but this time we're using good old Dakota brand from Aldi. And all we do is we found that we like to have them cooked on the grill while everything else is cooking better than we do whenever they're cooked inside. So we have this little pan. I don't even know where it came from. I think we got it from like, where did we get this pan, Jeffrey? I don't know. We've had it for years. All we do is pour our beans in here. If you want to add anything to your beans, you do that. I don't see any point because it's already got all the 
sugar and all the stuff in it. I mean, you could add onions or something like that, but we just put them in the pan. Oh, that happened. I do wash my lids before I um, cut them. Now it all came out. Um, anyway, I put them in the pan, and while Jeff is cooking everything else on the grill, or me, whoever's cooking on the grill, because I do sometimes now, um, since I learned how to use the pellet grill, uh, while everything else is cooking, he just sits this in the back corner and lets it cook the whole time. He doesn't do anything to it. He just lets it sit there and cook. So that's done. It's ready to go. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is our corn on the cob. It's just frozen corn. You can do this with um, fresh corn, whatever corn you have, you know, corn on the cob you have. All we do is take a piece of corn, and I think I've shown this before, put it down on a piece of aluminum foil, take a little bit of butter, maybe a little over a teaspoon or so, stick it on there, add salt and pepper, We seem to always add more pepper than salt. And then you just wrap it up. And you have a little corn pouch. So I'm gonna do, Jeff, how many pieces of corn do you want? So I'm gonna do six. Do you want any for work? Okay, so I'm gonna do six. So I'm gonna get those done real quick. And then I'm going to do the chicken kebabs. And whenever I do the chicken kebabs, I normally have peppers. Wait a minute, I do have, Jeff. I don't know where it went, but I normally have bell pepper, but I don't have any of that that's thawed. Can you grab those little sweet peppers out? Because we need to use those anyway. They're in the bottom drawer. They're already washed. We need to use them up. We usually put pepper and onion, but since I don't have any of the bell pepper, I'm just going to use some of these others because we need to use them. If we don't, they may ruin, which Noah's been grabbing them out and just eating them like, you know, raw. All right, there's three. I'm gonna do this. what I would normally do anyway. I would normally just go ahead and get however many I need out and get them ready. Now, um, another thing you can do is you can do all of this stuff that I'm doing and then um, take these little packets like this and stick them in, a, in the freezer and they'll be ready for you to go ahead and just throw on the grill whenever. You don't have to um, do it immediately, like as soon as you're making them, or as soon as you're ready to cook them, you can do it in advance, is what I'm trying to say.
Okay, so Jeff's gonna put some of this Kaneka sausage on the grill too. These are the smaller links. Um, we do both of them, but he's gonna put some of that on the grill, but all he does is just put it on the grill like this. And then later on, if we decide we want barbecue sauce on it or something, he puts some on it, but we don't put it on all of it because Noah doesn't like the barbecue sauce on it. So he's gonna put some of this on. I don't know how much because he's putting some on for work too. And um, I'm gonna get the kebabs ready. I have on gloves. Um, for the simple reason or simple fact whatever the words are uh, that I have very dry hands which I have told you guys before and right now they have some open sores and I know that this onion well not open sores but they have some very tender spots um, I know this onion and the seasonings from the Chicken will hurt them, so I'm going to use. Are the kebabs on it? Yes, the kebabs are going on that. I'm going to use gloves today because of that reason. That way, if anybody has a question about it, they now know why. This onion had some weirdness going on, it grew crazy. I didn't cut it deep enough in to get all that crazy out. So I cut the onion pretty big because if you don't, it's not going to stay on the skewer. You can't cut it too small. And the meat we marinated whenever we cut it up and put it in the freezer. And then I took it out and for it to thaw earlier this week. It's like the onion was trying to grow another onion on the inside of it. That's weird. But it's happened before. All right, I'm just gonna cut that in half because it's pretty, it's pretty small onions as it is. So, I'm going to set myself up a little system here and these peppers, I'm going to leave them whole and like I said, they've already been washed so there's no reason why I can't just use those like they are and I'm going to throw all this garbage in this bag to get it out of my way. That was probably really loud. Okay, so I got all my stuff ready here. Put my knife over there. And sit that like that. I'm gonna put a piece of onion on first. You can do it however you want. This is just the way we do it. Um, we do normally make one with no type of vegetable on it because Selena doesn't eat the vegetables. Do you care if I leave these whole? I didn't think so. It's pretty big though. Yeah, I think so. I didn't know if they just flop around though. Well, they flop around, they just flop around. But we found that we like to go ahead and marinate our meat before we put it in the freezer and um, it just tastes good that way. It's just easier too. Just go ahead and have it ready to go whenever it's time to cook it. And if something happened and we didn't remember to take it out of the freezer, we wouldn't have to wait on the marinating time. We could just take it and thaw it out. We do this with different things. With pork and chicken anyway. We don't do it with beef. I don't think we ever have anyway. But 
but I just put all the stuff on the skewers until I run out and I do have other skewers then I put it on a tray that's pretty big and it's super easy to clean up by the time it's all said and done because you don't have any pans in the house other than this one pan right here and we'll wash it and put the cooked meat back on it after we wash after we are done or put all the cooked food on it the corn and all that stuff and we just have skewers to wash and you can throw them in the dishwasher okay so this is after it's all put on the skewers Selena has one without the vegetables because she doesn't eat them and then we have the others with the sausage that's how much he decided to cook and um he's gonna put this on the grill and i will just show you guys what the whole entire thing looked like once it looks like once our food is done because we're trying to get it all done before noah gets off work for lunch because he has an hour for lunch and he's coming home so we want to get it done so we'll see y'all whenever this is all cooked and yummy delicious Today we're going to be sharing how we do the deer steak. Normally Jeff does all this, but he told me how he does it, which he still could come over here and do it, but either way. Um, we have egg and milk in this little bowl, and then this right here is all-purpose flour, and he puts salt and pepper in here. How much do you put in here of the pepper? Okay. <laughs> We ain't doing that. We ain't playing that today. Okay. Then how much salt? Think that was enough? If you thought it was enough, it was enough. I always put it on the meat. And then I put a little bit, well, I put a little bit on the meat and then I put a little bit on the other. But this, you don't want it, does this most of the time. I mean, I have done it, but you've got a different way than the way we used to do it, so. And over on the stove top, he's got some oil um, heating up. Why does it look so dark? Did it look this dark last time? Mm -hmm. Oh, all right. All right, so what we do is we put it in the egg wash first. Then we put it in the flour. Make sure it's covered all over. Put it back on the freezer paper. And we do that with all of them, however many we have. Today it's just four. That's all that was in the pack.
and then by the time of that get the last one done we start over and do them all over again this is the way they do like chicken fried steak is double dip sometimes triple but we just do it double there's a piece of meat there and put it back and you do the same process until you get them all re-dipped and then by the time you get done with all this your oil should be hot enough to put them in we should be able to put all four of them in there you think Jeff? that's a small amount usually there's more than four in a pack the deer cube steak. For mine and Selena's, all I'm going to do is just put some salt and pepper on it. And ours is more like a saute instead of a fry because we just use a small, a very small amount of oil, just enough that it won't stick. And I always cook onion in it, um, in with it. So we'll get this cleaned up get the salt and pepper on mine and hers it's over here you can't see it and then uh, we'll show you this going in the pan okay so we're fixing to go ahead and put the deer in yeah it's right I was supposed to use the other for this the fork not the tongs now I'm going to have to stuff all over that And this one is the one for the beef cube steak. And I always put on it with salt and pepper. And I cut up a small onion to go in there with it. And we're going to cook corn nuggets and fake taters or mashed potatoes with it. But you just cook it the way you would any kind of chicken fried or whatever. But in a few, well, actually, no, it looks like it can be turned over now. See, that looks pretty good. Go ahead and flip this. It's cooking faster than I expected. Okay, I flipped these one more time and I will have to flip them once more before they're done because of that kind of situation. And then I flipped these once and I'll probably flip them one more time before they're done because they're a lot thinner than these. Plus they don't have the batter on them. So they don't take quite as long to cook them. And then back there is the corn nuggets. You can't really see that, but this is what they are. That's probably not going to work right whenever I have to edit it. But anyway, that's the corn nuggets. And here's the fake taters. And we just add water, milk, and butter with those. And I will show you what everything looks like whenever it's on the table.